Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. And if you thought I gave up on this project, well, I'm happy to say that I didn't and that I actually have some very interesting things to add to it. So my idea from the beginning of the project was to, at some point, add lights to the computer inside of the hamster ball. Recently, I came across this super cheap sort of a fiber optics lamp that, as you can see, separates the light into tiny little spots. It is powered by some simple AA batteries and it has this uh, super interesting three color light cycle that I feel will look amazing on the project. I hope to fit everything inside of the ball through this whole right here in the bottom that I left opened uh, just for that reason. But before I start working with the lights, let me just take care of something that was really bothering me. I was recently taking apart some dead laptops that I had laying around, and when I took the fan out, I found an exact copy of one of the fans I used on the base like a couple of months ago. I was really not expecting to match the fans on this project, so this was a happy surprise. I removed the first one of the base using a pair of pliers, made some adjustments here and there there and glued the new one on its place. As much as I love breaking the symmetry on my projects, I really wished uh, these fans were identical so couldn't be happier. Ok, so now let's work on the lights. This is a super cheap lamp so taking it apart was very easy and inside of it there's almost nothing, which I think is good news. I took some measurements from the battery container because I was hoping to keep it as it is and fit it through the bottom, but I quickly decided to switch for this two batteries holder that is smaller and much better built. So of course I had to desolder and replace the battery holder on the circuit board. And despite being very bad at soldering, I managed to keep everything working. Now with that battery holder on hand, I went and I 3D modeled some pieces to try to keep everything nice and solid on a single structure. The pieces were modeled to fit around the battery holder and to keep everything together I was using hot glue creating this sort of a miniature lighthouse. But I left the shop that day feeling a bit uneasy with the design, so in the next day I redesigned and printed new parts because yeah, I'm that insane. But to be honest, the second try fits much better and I added this lip right here on the bottom uh, which will prevent the whole thing from falling inside the ball because that will be a disaster. Now, before I show you how I'm gonna distribute all of those tiny light spots, let me actually show you where I'm gonna put it. All of those years of collecting dead printers led me to this huge box of plastic gears. And yes, this is the same gear I used on the combat robot build. I just happened to have one extra of it, maybe even more, who knows. I felt it would look amazing on the front of the ball, facing the workers on the pad, so I'll begin by making a hole where I can later install it. Then, using a laser cut acrylic shape as a sort of a guide, I made some markings on the plastic gear. Then, using a peeing vise, I hand drilled some holes on it, and of course, I threw a coat of primer because the white makes everything super hard to see. Then I 3D modeled and printed this piece right here, not only to match the ball shape, but also to sort of frame the gear piece. And then of course it got installed on the ball using a ton of CA glue. Now my idea is to wire a bunch of those fake plastic fiber optics from the lighthouse to the detail pieces I'll add on the surface of the ball, creating many clusters of light on it. And the challenge right here is to keep everything separated, because attaching the wires will have to be the very last step on this build. And this is the result I was looking for, but of course with many more light spots all around the piece. That gear facing the workers is gonna be like the main interface of the computer, so I wanna have dozens of light spots on that piece alone. But in order to keep the light spots organized and evenly distributed, I printed some small shapes with tiny little holes on it just to benefit from the precision that 3D printing gives me. After I glued all of the pieces and drilled all of the holes, I went and I did a quick detail pass. 
After a couple of hours, this was the result and I'm pretty happy with the level of detail I got. Now in the middle, my idea is to actually add this very good looking lens from a dead webcam that I of course got from my collection of lenses. Now of course I knew that attaching the fiber optics will have to be the very last step in this project, but I was feeling a bit anxious about it and I decided to test the idea just to be sure before moving on with the project. So I kinda organized all of the wires and I saw that it was really going to work and look super cool. That was also very helpful because when doing that I actually discovered that the hole that I had on the ball was too small now that I added all of the lights all around the gear piece. So at that point I had to actually widen that cap and I did that using my Dremel and some sanding tube. With that out of the way, it was time to add more clusters around the sphere, and this shape from a cassette tape seems like a good choice uh, with this black gravy on the middle of it. I just had to of course make some adjustments on it and glue them together with some CA glue. I then experimented on where it was going to be on the surface of the sphere, but eventually I decided to keep both on the same side, not only to break the symmetry, but also to avoid creating the scared emoji face on the computer. Now attaching these two cassette tape gribblies would also be the last step on the project so I had to create some attachment points to it on the surface of the sphere and I did that with a couple of plastic rings that you can see right there. With a couple of light clusters already installed on the sphere, I felt a bit insecure on where exactly to add the next big shapes. To break out of that decision paralysis, I actually decided to go on a quick detail pass. See, the spherical aesthetic is super important in this project, so I didn't really want to just keep adding a bunch of features to the thing and end up with something visually messy. This is something that I always worry about in my projects, to have different levels of detail all around it and to be able to keep the original shape visible. So at this point I was really careful and added mainly surface details. I want to paint this supercomputer on a shiny metal color and I really want the light to bounce out of it, accentuating its curves. So again, I had to be strategic about it. Like I always do in my projects, I went and I added like the 10th coat of primer on the thing. I'm kind of crazy about primer. At this point, I decided to have some wires coming down from the open top of the computer. Again, my idea is that the workers on the pad are kind of performing some sort of procedure on the computer, so the wires would add to that narrative. Now, of course, I don't want to have the wires going all the way kind of crazy, so I made this grip right here and glued it to the side of this sphere to guide the wires uh, down kind of in a good looking way. Now, where each wire is going to go is something that I'll decide on the future. At that point, I decided to take everything apart, like each individual wire from the base, and throw a coat of primer to then go on a final detail pass. Now, the detail pass is a very important stage of the designing, as important as the foundation of big shapes, I'd say. Some randomness can be cool, but you gotta be focused on the narrative each shape will add to the model and really think it through. This is really a skill you develop as you make your models. And speaking of skills, if you want a free and easy way to add to your skill set, then you should check this week's video sponsor Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science and computer science interactively. Whatever your skill level is, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and it lets you solve at your own pace. And there's a ton of interesting topics from like logic to data science, AI, engineering. I mean, you can really choose what you want to master and have a great time. 
I'm super busy, but whenever I get a few precious minutes for myself, I hop on Brilliant and I make some quick progress, like I've been doing on the scientific thinking course, and you can learn anywhere on your phone, tablet or computer. I've been looking on the next thing I'm gonna tackle on Brilliant and let me tell you, the 3D geometry course they got there sounds like the perfect choice for me, especially because they have a hands-on learn by doing way to teach that's very intuitive and that really works for visual learners. Brilliant is super fun and interactive with thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics and new lessons are added every month. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days visit brilliant.org slash cut transform glue or click the link in the description. Through that link the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I have a ton of tubing on the front of the base and I kind of want to have the same thing going on the back. So right here this is some PVC white tubing that I have that works amazing. I just have to heat it up uh, a little, this is like 5 millimeter tube so in order to bend it perfectly you gotta heat it a bit and then of course I made some holes on the base and then installed each tube on its place. This cheap white PVC tubing is like the best thing I recently discovered here where I live and I really recommend you going for something like this because it is really useful on some projects, especially like bases and dioramas. Recently I found a bunch of plastic tubes and I of course want to add like a couple on the back of the base. So I took some measurements of it and I quickly made some custom angle pieces and some fittings. All of these STL files by the way uh, can be found on my Patreon page along with a huge collection of STLs I got there. With all of the pieces printed, I just had to cut the tubes and of course, I put everything together with a ton of CA glue. I've added a couple of griblies on the end of each tube as you can see and of course I threw a good coat of primer on the whole thing. And I gotta say I'm really happy with the end result, I feel like this level of detail on the back is just perfect. Let me take a moment right here to thank my patrons for the amazing support and of course as always, thanks for watching.